Hello, humans. Welcome back to the study of the Bible in chronological order. It is written in Genesis 7-1. Then the Lord said to Noah, Enter the ark, you and all your household, for you alone I have seen to be righteous before me in this time. You alone? God told Noah that he alone had been viewed as righteous. Now remember that in Genesis 6-5, God had declared... Every intent of the thoughts of man's heart was only evil continually. Thus, Noah had been completely surrounded and outnumbered by evil people. Now, ponder on how unthinkable that scenario would be if you were Noah. However, this one verse teaches us that even one person can live right, even if that one person is surrounded by wicked people who love evil. Well, this verse also reveals the fact that God's love will extend out, even if only to one person. Are you willing to be the one? Listen, even if you're willing to be the one, how can someone live right while surrounded and outnumbered by wicked people who love evil? It's probably something important to know in this time that we live in. To be righteous... A person needs to do what is right in all circumstances and base all actions and reactions on the foundation of God's word. To be righteous, uh, someone might be required to be alone and or unpopular. And finally, to be righteous, a person needs to possess endurance in doing what is right regardless of the outcome. Now, because Noah was found to be righteous... God spoke to Noah. God instructed him to build a large ship and then to gather all the animals into that ship. Oh, wow. Two simple steps, right? <laughs> However, something that is simple is not necessarily easy. I think we all know that. And because 2 Peter 2.5 states that Noah was a preacher of righteousness... It's almost certain that while he had been constructing the ship, he was likely preaching to others. So trying to warn them of what would happen if they did not repent from living wickedly, loving evil. And because 1 Peter 3.20 describes that time period as when the patience of God kept waiting, well, it seems evident that the people refused to listen to Noah. So let's talk about those three things. Like, what is required for a person to be righteous? Number one, do what's right in all circumstances while basing actions and reactions from the foundation of God's word. Noah did his best to live a righteous life by living faithfully obedient to God's commands. Everyone else had decided to live wickedly as if they were their own gods. Now, in Noah's time, evil was the the plague with which everyone had been infected. And if Noah was the only one to be found righteous by God, do you think that Noah was popular with the wicked people? Now, he was probably well known. I am certain Noah was probably a despised man. Now, typically doing what is right when others desire to do what is wrong makes you a despised outcast. Scripture states that only a total of eight people were saved from the flood. We see this in Genesis 7, 13 and 2 Peter 2, 5. Now, many scholars have debated about how long it actually took Noah to build the ark, but consensus says he had about a hundred years to complete it. Now, that does not mean that it actually took him a hundred years to complete the construction, but that's how long he had to complete it before the flood ever occurred. Ponder on that. I mean, just think about that. Noah spent perhaps a hundred years preaching to others and doing what was right and getting shunned and doubted. Now, obviously, if only eight people were saved, that means no one cared to listen to Noah. Think about that. Even after one single year of Noah preaching, the sinners to whom he preached, they had not yet faced any consequences for their actions. So why would they listen to Noah during the second year or the 10th 
or even the 50th, especially the 99th year, after decades of Noah preaching and constructing a ship in the desert, do you really think that he was popular for good reasons among all of those wicked people? Those wicked people must have mocked him, laughed at him, called him crazy, told him, be quiet, stop preaching, just accept them for who they are, stop judging them, etc. Now, I wonder how many threats he received from those wicked people. Yet, Noah continued to build the ship. He continued to preach the truth of God's word. Now, can you imagine Noah constructing the ark? Think about it. Try to picture it. There were probably piles of wood everywhere, tools here and there, unused scraps laying about, an unfinished project that sat there on desert sand year after year with little progress each year. Noah most likely heard the scoffers often say to him, you're crazy, old man. You're not making a difference. You're making a mess. You're just making a fool of yourself. Your God is not showing up. And, and where is all of this water that you keep warning us about? <laughs> You've been saying the same nonsense for years. Shut up already. You should just give up this nonsense. Lock yourself up in an insane asylum. Or, you know, why don't you just do everyone else a favor and just go kill yourself? Or maybe, maybe I should just put you out of your lonely misery. That way I can use this wood to actually build a home for myself. <laughs> we probably would kill you, old man, but we think it's hilarious watching you build this giant thing. <laughs> the old man is sailing in the desert. <laughs> Number two, you might be required to be alone and or unpopular. When wicked people doubt your message because they reject the word of God, it would almost be expected that you would feel alone, unpopular, despised, maybe even possess a feeling of hopelessness because nobody is listening. It feels like you don't belong in this world. Satan typically uses those opportunities to infiltrate a person's mind with doubt, fear, and hopelessness. Being a voice of reason amongst people acting unreasonable is not easy. It can cause one to feel isolated. Feeling isolated in a populated place, that can be unfulfilling, potentially draining. Can you imagine the suffering Noah endured throughout all those years of isolation, verbal abuse from all the unbelievers, and a consistent desire to know, to know when God was going to, fulf to fulfill his promise? I mean, after all, the, the promised flood, it certainly was not happening. <laughs> How many times do you think Noah might have questioned his calling? How many times do you think Noah asked God, How long, Lord? How long will this take? How long will I have to wait? I mean, I could almost hear Satan asking Noah, did God really say he was going to flood the entire earth? Are you sure you're supposed to build a ship this large? Shouldn't you be done by now? Are you sure you're not crazy like everyone keeps telling you that you are? What if they're right and you're wrong? If we allow doubt to drown the purpose of our calling, the feeling of loneliness can override the calling from his holiness. But becoming obsessed with what people think about you, that is the quickest way to forget what God says about you. The feeling of loneliness can potentially cause you to throw away your calling in order to fit in with the crowd to become conformed with the ways of this world. But God's word says we are not to be conformed to the ways of this world, but to be transformed by the renewal of our minds according to God's will, 
Romans 12, 2. <clears throat> now, for this reason, <laughs> the wise Dr. Seuss once said, Why fit in when you were born to stand out? If you allow wicked people to plant seeds of discouragement in your life, those seeds will grow into weeds that will strangle the life out of you at your roots. Noah had to keep his focus on his calling, not the crowd, to keep his focus on the truth of God's word rather than the devil's words that are lies. Again, the goal is simply stated, but it's not always easily executed and achieved. Simplicity is not often achieved easily. So number three, to be righteous, a person needs to faithfully endure until the end. Longevity, persistence, never giving up. Always do what is right regardless of the danger or the fear that is involved. Now this is the most difficult part about living righteously. People often quit too soon. Now, sometimes the hardest choice and the right choice are one and the same. To be someone special, to be set apart as a vessel for holy purposes, you must set yourself apart from others you, and declare yourself as someone who has been called by God for righteous purposes. If being chosen means going against the flow, like, like a salmon swimming upstream, then do exactly that. Salmon fish are, are unlike many other fish because they live in both fresh water and salt water. So not only that, but a salmon will travel hundreds to thousands of miles in order to do what they must do to be fruitful and multiply. Now, wouldn't you agree that swimming hundreds to thousands of miles is not an easy task to accomplish, even though the description, as it is stated, it sounds simple. Yeah, yeah, just swim thousands of miles. <laughs> well, it sounds simple. It's not easy. And not only do these fish continue to swim mile after mile, these persistent fish, they will go against the flow. They will swim upstream to do what they know is right. Going against the flow is sometimes the only way to go. And yes, it will be difficult, sometimes even dangerous or even deadly, but it can be rewarding as well. Listen, living a righteous life is like swimming upstream and, and facing the danger of bears, but it is what is right. It's what we're supposed to do. Bears, they will wait where tiny waterfalls are located in order to catch the salmon who are attempting to leap up in their efforts to continue swimming upstream. Satan and his demons, they are like the bears. We are like the salmon. Evil waits uh, until we are off balance in order to knock us down. Evil waits until we are out of our comfort zone in order to intimidate us into going back inside of our comfort zone. Evil positions itself at the most difficult spots in our journeys in order to take us out of our journey. <clears throat> now, some salmon, they will see the bear up ahead. They will allow fear to overtake them. They will decide to give up. Go back. Just go back. It's much easier. Likewise, some Christians, they see the challenge ahead. They allow doubt and fear to overtake them. They give up. Our sinful society will try to fill your head with doubt and fear and attempt to conquer your good with their evil. However, God's word tells us, Romans 12, 21, we are called to overcome evil with good. Being faithfully obedient for decade after decade while being mocked and unappreciated, that can, that can wedge room within your thoughts for doubt to grow and maybe even depression to set in. But you must never give up. We must faithfully endure until the end. Listen, most great things in life were achieved over a long period of time. And as the saying goes, right, Rome was not built in a single day. Likewise, a large ark required years for its proper construction. 
The ark was not built in a single day. But why did Noah have to build an ark at all in order to be saved? Well, first and foremost, it required faith. God is pleased by our faith. In addition, Noah was also in the act of helping to save others. He was being saved, but he was helping to save others as well. Noah saved his family and all of those animals uh, so that creation could flourish once again. And that is symbolic for us. The only way to rise to the top is to be the most righteous person you can possibly be. And again, we do that by acting in faithful obedience to God's commands, to what God told us to do. We are not to be righteous in order to claim superiority over others, but to simply be righteous for the sake of holiness because that's who God created us to be. Be holy, for I am holy. Moreover, by our action of building our ark, we will be helping others rise to the top with us. Noah built an ark. But what is it that we should build? Well, we should build a ship of devotion to love to God. Now, how do we build our ship of devotion? How do we build this ark? Well, by using all of the necessary tools that are available to us that are given to us. Reputation, character, honor, integrity, honesty, purity, morals, principles, faith, etc. Listen, if you build your ship of devotion with the indestructible and eternal gifts of the Spirit that God provides, you will rise to the top when all others drown in the consequences of their own wickedness, by their own choices. Now, why did the others drown? Because they did not build an ark. And nothing they built in life was built by faith in the Lord. Now, not only did they not build an ark of faith, but they refused to join Noah in his ark. All of the wicked people, they tied anchors of sin to themselves. Anchors of murder, misery, anger, violence, lies, hatred, lust, etc. They drowned because they tied themselves down with the anchor of unnecessary burden, which is pride. We should all declare a, a friendly competition between ourselves of being the most righteous. Make it your goal to be the most righteous person you can possibly be at all times. The clock is ticking. After all, we are once again in the days of Noah, with him being in the beginning and us in the end. Every unproductive, unproductive second that goes by, it's another moment of time in which someone else could be boarding the ship of faith. Now, of course, <clears throat> righteousness is not a, a true competition, right? As if we could actually win this. Like we're not striving to be better than others for the for this sake of pride. That vanity, it will only build our pride. Rather, we are to strive to be better today than we were the day before. We're all in a purification process. Our righteousness is credited to us through our faith, but this is evident through our fruit. So if we are all living this calling out rightly, we will all be building each other up while building a ship of devotion to the Lord. We rise above in love. Noah was righteous because he built the ark by faith. That's what it says in Hebrews eleven seven. The ship took decades upon decades of time to complete. Noah would not have been able to build that ship of devotion unless he had also built up his faith in the process. Without faith, it's easy to give up. In fact, without faith, it is written in Hebrews eleven six, it's impossible to please God. The path to success is always under construction until it's complete. 
Ensure to find ways to build your faith and ensure to do what is right. Never give up. Remember, it is better. This is what is written in, in 1 Peter 3, 17. It is better to suffer unjustly for doing what is right, if that should be God's will, than to suffer justly for doing what is wrong. Only eight people were saved due to Noah's faithful endurance over decades of work. <laughs> Think about that. I mean, that doesn't seem like he made much of a difference, does it? What we do may not seem like it amounts to much, but the impact of what we do always has a much farther reach than we actually realize. Only eight people were saved from Noah's century-long efforts. But how many people exist in the world today because of those eight? It is written, all people, all people who ever existed since him and all people who currently exist. The lesson to be learned is that it never seems as if we are making a difference while we are in the process of making a difference. And even if we don't feel qualified to do what we've been called to do, God is with us. And that's all that really matters. After all, it is written in Romans 8, 31, if God is for us, who can be against us? Now remember, I want you to remember this. The ark was built by an amateur <laughs> and the Titanic and many other professional ships that have sunk in the sea they were all built by experts. But remember also, you can make a difference just by merely smiling, showing others what it looks like to be a child of God. All you have to do is reflect Jesus. After all, it says in John 13, 35, we will be known as disciples of Christ due to our love for others. There are many ways to make a difference. But faithful obedience, faith-filled endurance is required to make a big difference. Therefore, faithfully endure in love. Never give up. Noah's ark was the hope. Faith was required to continually build the hope. But it was, it was necessary to continually build the faith while building the hope. Hope does indeed float, and it, it rise above, while others choose to drown in their sins. Are you building your hope in God's promised word of our future? Are you building your faith while building your hope? Do you desire to make a difference? Then be righteous. Even if you build your faith and your hope, you must be willing to trust God for the results and then take action based upon your faith. So in conclusion, the three main points previously mentioned about making a difference according to righteousness, they can actually be opened up and they can be expanded out to seven steps to making a difference. So the following seven steps, they reveal the order of, of the three main points that I talked about. One, seek God. Two, know God. Three, faithfully obey God's word. Four, faithfully endure in your obedience. Five, enter the ship of his covenant and be sealed within. And I only have one hand because my hand is holding the phone, but Six, be patient. Allow God to work in his perfect timing. And seven, always be ready to leave your comfort zone <clears throat> um, of your current dwelling space. Always be ready to leave your comfort zone of your current dwelling space so that you will be able to step out into your new purpose. If Noah can be one who is righteous then so can you. So can you. And in the last days, 
when we will all be surrounded and outnumbered by wicked people who love evil, which we are in the days of Noah, we are in the days of Sodom, it will be of utmost importance that we follow these seven steps so as to enter the narrow door and not experience the judgment outside. So, until next time, righteous ones.